Alright, so this is the new radiator. Old radiator. We gotta transfer the junk off the old radiator radiator onto the new one. So on the top of it right here, two little rubble rubber isolators that we pull out. One there. And one here. Most of the time these are fine, they just go on there to keep everything in place and, and they're rubber, they're uh, not like high wear parts, so for the most part you can reuse them unless you happen to be missing one or uh, in the rare case that one's damaged. Alright, that's a good sign, first thing fits. Barely. It's a little tight. Fingers crossed. Alright. The other thing we have to take off of this is these bottom rubber bumpers. There and there. Uh, the radiator sets on these. Again, not a high wear item. Uh, rubber probably fine. No need to get new ones unless they break or wear out. Don't, don't bother. Hey, alright. Fits. That's always nice. And that fits as well. Alright. And the last thing is the temperature switch sensor right here. actually senses the temperature of the radiator at the moment. So we have that. And uh, Mishimoto recommends that you put Teflon tape on this, which seems strange to me honestly, but they're the bosses, they made this thing. Here, you should want to put a cap on there. All right. The drain plug also came wrapped in Teflon, but the Teflon wrapping was uh, pretty poor, so I think I'm going to redo that. Last thing to note is the small bolts that I'm going to use to bolt everything on. Uh, since Mish Mishimoto did not seem to supply this, uh, there's 16, 16, 6 millimeter thread right in there like that. I chose to use stainless steel. Um, I suppose aluminum would work well too if you found it. Uh, I didn't want them to get all rusted. Um, stainless steel, and certainly aluminum, is weaker than regular steel. Uh, but it's just holding on a fan drive, so I wasn't concerned about that. This is way more than the standard BMW hardware, so definitely not concerned about strength. Well, I think we're all ready. We're going to move over to the car and going to put this beauty in. We're going to go ahead and prep the fan shroud because you have to put that in first. It's very difficult to put in after the radiator's in. So really all that means is I'm going to take this old overflow tube off and put the new one on. There we go. 
hose clamp on first. Just gonna slide that end. Something like that. Let me get it. It, it does have very special bends, so I'm gonna get it lined up roughly where it needs to go first, and then tighten down the hose clamp. So the fan shroud just drops in here like this. It's really easy to do once when the radiator's out. Impossible to do if the radiator well nearly impossible to do with radiators in. Uh, remember to re-thread this hose in here. It's kind of a pain. It's going to fit in these bottoms. Brackets here. So after you've worked this hose all the way through the fan shroud, You'll want to connect it to the back up to the uh, tank. Put your hose clamp on there. Just drop it down wherever. And then uh, definitely do this before you do anything else because it's nearly impossible to do this if you can't pull the fan shot out like this. So there we go. We got that. radiator in here but it's important to get this in and pull the cooler for the transmission up and then just slide it in that space Checking the those bottom rubber bumpers just set on a uh, plastic bracket down there. So that's that. We're gonna lift up the radiator for the transmission. Make sure that that's gonna line up for us before I do anything else. And what do you know? Looks like it's gonna work. That's always nice push that up from the bottom a little bit to help you line things up. There we go. Just gonna get these started. Okay, I have the bottom bolts on. Turns out it's much easier to put it in before the radiator is properly seated. Alright, it's all very nice. Now, I'm going to go ahead and seat the radiator. Just putting those rubber bumpers on the little plastic things right there. Alright, next, we'll put the fan shroud on. So I'm working on the left side of the car here, and these little hooks carry this plastic part. So they need to go on there like that. Also I have to make sure that the hoses are where they need to be and not blocking anything. Alright, so that's that side. 
checking the center tab on the top and then checking the right side of the car. So make sure as you're sliding the sides into those little brackets that this top tab hooks over too. You kind of have to do it at the same time so it's a little bit tricky. And then of course this hose right here is in place and the bottom hose is also where it needs to be. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put the bolts on the top to fasten the fan tread. If you were using the OEM radiator, these would be rivets. I much prefer bolts though. Just hate those plastic rivets. All right, gonna tighten that down, put the other side on. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten these down after I've gotten both started and positioned. Again, I'm using six millimeter bolts and uh, they require a 10 millimeter wrench to tighten them down. All right, so on the Mishimoto radiator, I'm noticing that this pipe isn't, uh, isn't positioned very well. It's kind of angled. Uh, I guess, what do you expect for 250 bucks? It's cute. So that's not allowing this to go on past this fan shroud. I'm going to try and shave that down just a little bit. There we go. That should allow me to put this on now. This was the piece that got the crack in it the first time, which required me to replace the radiator to begin with. It was plastic. This is aluminum. I like that. Uh, I wish that it would fit a little bit better, but you can't have everything. Alright, once again I'm going to put my hose clamps on first. Perfect. Alright. And I'm going to put these here, tighten it down. I already put the bottom radiator hose on. Uh, I would definitely make sure that it's connected to the thermostat housing first and then put the radiator in and then put it on. That one's much harder. You can't really see it, so I'm not going to show it. But make sure that you follow the same process on that one. Put it on. Tighten your hose clamps down. So we're just about done. After you get all the hoses connected and the fan shroud connected and that, the cooling radiator for the transmission oil, everything on, uh, go ahead and snap down these. Snap them back into the radiator. And then uh, go ahead and start putting things back together. The air intake for the alternator just drops right back on there. Screw it down with the four Phillips screws. screws. Pop your little plastic rivets in here, one in there, one in there. <coughs> These plastic rivets don't hold up very well. Um, it's not a bad idea to buy a couple extra because, yeah, they break all the time. They're not really a great design. All right, so that's on there like that. We'll go ahead and reattach the cool air intake for the alternator. Snaps on there like that. There's a hose clamp right here. Go ahead and drop the air box in place. After some minor setbacks, uh, some major setbacks, just annoying crap, uh, we're finally ready to fill the radiator. So what I have is two gallons of BMW antifreeze, 
two gallons of distilled water. Should be more than I need, I'm not really sure because this is a bigger radiator. Uh, I'm going to mix them together 50-50 and pour them in the radiator. Uh, one quick thing, uh, I bought the BMW antifreeze even though it's more expensive because it's, apparently it's specially formulated to prevent sludge. It's probably a load of crap, but um, redoing everything, might as well put the good stuff in. Uh, more importantly, make sure that you get distilled water um, because it doesn't have all those minerals and the crap that's going to gunk up your radiator. Okay, big bucket. Going to mix it 50 50. Cleaned out the inside of this bucket really good. And anywhere that you can mix it 50 50 is good. I'm in a hurry, so there it is, 50-50. All right, now I'm just going to pour that in the radiator. Okay, I have the bleeder screw loose, it's right here. And I'm just filling it up. I've been filling it up. I already put a lot in. I'm just going to put in as much as I can. The bleeder screw, when you fill it, allows air to escape out of the radiator. You can actually hear it. I don't know if you can hear it on the camera, but a little hissing sound as the air kind of escapes out through the bleeder screw. All right, that's about as much as I can put in there. It's now starting to bubble out of the bleeding bleeder screw, so it's a good sign that it's starting to get full right now. Now I'm going to go ahead and start the car. Very important, I'm also going to turn the heater on full blast. I'm just going to run it and run it and run it. Turning the heater on full blast allows the coolant to run through the heater core and everywhere in the engine so that coolant's fully circulating and you're getting any air out and as it does that and as the engine heats up you'll continue to fill it and fill it and fill it to make sure it's absolutely full. If you don't do that there might be air in there, uh, it might not be completely full and your engine will suddenly overheat. It can be really serious. So this next step is important. going to watch it, let it heat up as the fluid level drops, uh, again an overflow from the bleeder screw. As the uh, fluid level drops, I'll just keep adding it, I'll keep this filler screw loose because that's where the air is going to come out of the system. I'm going to keep doing that and keep doing that until the engine's good and warmed up. And then I'll tighten this screw down, put the cap back on, and rock. There's a couple other things you need to be aware of as you're filling your radiator. And I wanted to just highlight them now when I had a little more time. Uh, I was running off to a Christmas party when I made that. So, first, make sure to get your engine good and hot. Just because the temperature gauge reads at 12 o'clock doesn't mean your car is hot. In fact, it's probably not. Um, you will feel it as it starts getting hot. The hot air will blow off the engine and you will definitely know that it's getting hot. Um, as it gets hot, at some point when it's getting hot, the thermostat will open. And when that does, the water level in the reservoir usually drops dramatically. So if you see that happen, that's a good sign that the engine really is heating up. Uh, the other thing that you need to know that I didn't really make clear is that you should watch that bleeder screw because as you're filling it and as the engine's running, uh, it will be bubbling. And the, that bubbling is still air coming out of the engine and the radiator as the coolant is getting pumped through. 
So you really want to wait until uh, you don't get any bubbling, any air out of the bleeder screw uh, before you tighten everything up and shut it off. So if you do both of those things, um, you should have it pretty full and you should avoid any air pockets or problems like that. Uh, of course, you do always want to keep an eye on it, and uh, I would recommend, like, after the first time you drive it, or a couple times you drive it, to just check the level and make sure there's no other problems. Uh, really important, just take your time, run your car for a good long time to get it nice and warm, and you should be set there.